Hi everyone. Um, my name is Bill Spire. I'm an assistant professor in the medical informatics lab, and um, I work also in the um, neurosurgical brain lab and restoration lab. And I wanted to talk today a little bit about um, the preliminary work that we've had um, in a project called uh, Decoding Speech from Neural Signals for Brain Controlled Assistive Communication. Um, so basically for um, victims of neuromuscular diseases and, um, and various other uh, neurological problems such as ALS and cerebral palsy, um, these patients can lose the ability to um, control muscles and um, in severe cases can lose the ability to communicate. Um, there's a whole field of um, developing augmented and assistive communication devices, or AACs, um, but many of these require some sort of motor control that can be lost in severe cases. Uh, Brain-computer interfaces um, have been developed to try and restore some of this um, communication ability, but um, many of these are slow and impractical. So the goal here is to uh, leverage machine learning and natural language pro uh, processing methods to develop a paradigm to um, decode speech um, from thought to try and restore this communication at a uh, practical level for these patients. Um, because these patients aren't traditionally implanted with um, electrodes to allow us to record their signals, we have to um, first establish our methods in um, in patients who are already having these implanted. In this case, it's uh, epilepsy patients who are uh, in the hospital for observation with uh, ECOG or microelectrodes. Um, and uh, then we get access to these patients and can record their neural signals while we also record audio during speech. Um, we have three different data sets uh, that we've been working with, which are a combination of prospective and retrospective. Um, but today I'm going to be focusing on the second, which is um, provided by Dr. Fried here. The way this experiment works is, um, as I mentioned, we have the patients, um, in this case, re uh, repeat vowel consonant uh, combinations or vowels in isolation. Um, and then we uh, try to decode that speech from their neural signals by um, by first breaking down their speech into phonemes, which are the building blocks of spoken speech, and then um, at every time point, trying to recreate a probability distribution over phonemes about what we thought, what our classifier thinks they were trying to say. Um, so in the first pass, it's uh, every time point is completely independent, and we have um, a sequence then of probability distributions over the set of phonemes. We then um, created a model of spoken language based on a, um, a corpus of uh, natural language text and in combination with a dictionary of uh, phonemes from Carnegie Mellon. Um, and using this language model, we can incorporate it into a process model such as a hidden Markov model, or in this case, a particle filter to then smooth out the probability distributions and um, then creating um, a much more uh, continuous uh, representation of their speech uh, based, on, um, based on the signals and the model. So um, very uh, briefly covering the results so far, we have five subjects. Um, the performance of these subjects varied a good bit between um, 10, uh, sorry, about 5% up to almost 60%, um, and those vary based on electrolocalization and various other components that um, I can get into offline but don't really have the time for here. Um, and that's based on a full corpus of natural language. Um, we then reduced the corpus to specifically the words that they were trying to say, um, which makes it much easier to get things by uh, random chance, which is which are these red bars, but um, but also it, uh, greatly increased our performance of our models. Um, so we got up to 80% um, accuracy on word selection um, for in, for one of our subjects. Um, we also did a secondary analysis. Um, 
testing the um, hardest speech of these different phonemes. Um, so vowels versus consonants and then di different uh, articulatory features such as um, place or manner of articulation um, and showed that um, there are consistent trends among um, among these uh, these types of features. So we um, are looking towards instead of doing individual phoneme detection, um, breaking things down based on uh, or basically re-encoding these phonemes based on these other um, dimensions and then uh, building that into our classifier. And we're also um, looking into using uh, deep learning to create more sophisticated classifiers to um, hopefully do a better job of this um, classification. Um, and just briefly, I'd like to thank all of my collaborators, um, including several in the room right now. And uh, any questions? Good talk. So I, my question is, what's the resolution of the current ECAP? And uh, the accuracy depend on the ECAP resolution? Do you mean um, sampling rate? That, that's no, what or, rate, space. Oh, spatial. Um, so it, it varies between the, um, the different uh, data sets that we're talking about. Actually, the results here were for the microelectrodes, so those are um, actually very close. But um, but I, I think it, most of the others were one millimeter. Uh, question: Have you uh, thought about uh, trying to decode um, words rather than phonemes? Because uh, my my uh, thinking is that. When I think about something, I, about a word, I, I don't really think about the phonemes, but I mean, it, I think about in terms of ideas. Yeah. Um, so there have been papers that have done that. Uh, one of the problems is that the dictionary of words is much higher than the um, the set of phonemes. Uh, phonemes is about forty, and the dictionary can be millions. Um, the other um, aspect, and I'm basically out of time, so. Um, but it, if we're trying to just decode as you're speaking, um, it's not necessarily the conscious thought of the word, but rather um, possibly the formulation of the word um, sort of subconsciously. That, that's sort of an endless debate in all decodes, right? So with motor decoding, do you want to decode what your arm is actually doing or the intent of your movement versus word, word, or the underlying phoneme? You can always, you can decode at any level. The question is, you 